You are now tuning in to the Mind Body Podcast, where fitness experts and life coaches share their secrets on taking your mind and your body to the absolute best. This is the advice you wish you heard years ago. Get ready and take notes as we expose the raw truth behind achieving amazing natural physique and strength and ultimately become a stronger version of yourself. Bun venit, doamnelor și domnilor, la podcastul Minte și Corp. Huh? What this guy meant to say was... Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Mind Body Podcast. I'm your host, Lidor Dayan. And in this episode, I have a very special guest, like I always have. So, he is a Romanian entrepreneur. He has one of the best fitness educational YouTube channels. And he has over 120,000 subscribers. He is Radu Antonio. So, without further ado, let's begin the interview. First of all, I want to thank you for your time uh, being here. And uh, I gotta say, like, your YouTube channel is one of the best channels that I ever saw. Really, man, respect. <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. <laughs> The, the imagination, creativity, it's just amazing. So I, I wanted to start by taking you a little bit uh, to the beginning when you just started. So uh, if, if you can give me a little bit of a review, like how did you start uh, the, the YouTube channel, how you got into fitness? Oh, how I got into fitness? Um, well time I, I started going to a gym was uh, in high school and I did it because uh, I just wanted to improve the way I look so I'd be more attractive for, for women. Mm-hmm. The, the classic reason and yeah. uh, um, I only went to the gym for about a year then and I, I, I did most things wrong but you know with newbie gains on my side I, I made some pretty good progress. Uh, but um, after I, I made my new beginnings, I started to lose motivation. So I just stopped going after about a year because I wanted to, to focus on something else. I actually joined a multi-level marketing uh, company at the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, in that multi-level marketing company, I learned about personal development, personal growth. I had uh, a, a, um, a mentor in that company that showed me that there was more there was more to life than um, getting by. That you should set big goals in life and that you should achieve, uh, uh, you should go after your dreams. Mm-hmm. And uh, although I, I did not uh, become successful in that company, I picked up a very good mentality. Uh, the, the mentality of setting goals in life and going after them because that is when you feel most happy. And uh, uh, so I, I started going to the gym to focus on that. The company was forever living products, and I heard of it. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I so while I was in that in that company and I was uh, constantly pushing myself to achieve bigger goals, I I felt like I needed to achieve more in life. Mm-hmm. But I failed to to do something great in that company, and I needed another goal in my life. I needed something else to to make me feel accomplished, to make me feel like I was making progress towards towards my goal. And that ended up being fitness for me. So basically, I started really focusing on fitness, not because I was really passionate about it or because it was something that I I really wanted to do. It was because I wanted to have a big goal in life. I, I, I needed something to keep me going. I needed something to consume my attention and to make me grow. To, I, I need the goal I, to... to um, make me feel like I'm like I'm making progress mm-hmm. and uh, in, in the beginning I, I was just doing it for myself I, I was following the, the you know, body programs and uh, I, was, I was making good, good progress in the gym but after a while because I, I was I was constantly searching for for something to do and uh, I, I was searching for ways to build a business I heard Greg talking about um, the way he built nobody mm-hmm. uh, I, I heard him say that uh, a company at the time was making ten thousand dollars a month, and I said, "Wow, really?" His his website was so small at the time. Yeah. He only had about 
2,000 subscribers on, on, on YouTube. And uh, I, I thought if, if he can make so much money, then uh, I can probably do this as well in Romania. And it, it worked well because I knew I had the, the skills to, to write and make videos because I used to do that in, in high school as well. And uh, I knew I was good at understanding information and explaining it simply. So I fitness just happened to be an area um, that I could teach in. It wasn't it wasn't passion. It was I needed a goal in life, mm -hmm. and I saw Greg doing that, and I realized I could do it as well. So I said, Hey, why not try? Because in Romania, um, fitness information is pretty outdated, and uh, I knew that I could make a difference by um, keeping up to date with the latest research in the US and bring it here, spreading it um, in, in Romania. This is so, the beautiful thing that uh, I really uh, connect with you because you come from Romania, you come from another country, it's different language, uh, we both have accent, I come from Israel. So it's really difficult at the beginning when you're starting to like post in English, you will say, oh shit, what the fuck, I, I forgot uh, this word and this word, and it's really hard. Uh, but uh, uh, the, we both know that we can do more because we want to achieve more. And we don't want to just settle just because we live in this and this area. So I want to take you to this moment when you started to post in English, like, how was the environment, the people around you, how, how did they react to you? Um, so by, by the time I started posting in English, I think that my English was pretty advanced, I would say, because I did all of my research in English. Mm -hmm. all, all, all the books that I, that I read were in English, all the seminars that I watched were in English, all the YouTube videos I, uh, I watched were in English. I, uh, I, I, I was in school, I was in a special English class, mm -hmm. and while I was uh, in university, again, I was in a, in a, in a class uh, where uh, the classes were taught in English. So I was, I, I did not have a problem with the language, it's just, I, I knew the grammar and I had a, 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 a good vocabulary, I just, it was not natural for me to, to talk in English, and it, it still isn't to a point. Mm -hmm. So what I what I did is um, when I tried to do my, my first videos in English, I realized that I was rambling. I, I couldn't find my words so I can build co coherent sentences or phrases that uh, explain what I wanted to say simply. So uh, the videos ended up being horrible. I, I they, 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 they sucked so bad I didn't even really want to watch them myself. And uh, the what I did is I actually started writing my videos. I made a script for uh, all, all, all of my videos, line by line. I, I wrote everything, including the jokes, everything. <laughs> and I just said, you know what, Dave? I'm going to read each phrase, I'm going to memorize it, I'm going to read it looking in, in the camera. And then I would fix it in post, I would edit the video together so it seems seamless. Mm -hmm. And that is still the system I use right now, because I realized that writing the information, I can express my ideas more clearly, and that, that, that's one reason, and the second is because um, not being my, my first language, I can, I can, uh, it seems like I can talk better in, in my videos. So uh, that was my system, and it worked pretty well because uh, right from the first video, I, I, I got very positive feedback. Um, I, I was talking away because the Kino audience knew me, and uh, Greg actually sent me a graphic in the beginning, and the people uh, that were coming to your body were all very positive, were all supporting me, because I was basically uh, another person that was teaching the same information, so they could hear uh, Greg's ideas from another angle. And uh, I, was I, I was also contributing my own ideas. And uh, from then I just started to, to become better, to become better at writing and better at pronouncing, uh, the, the phrases that I was reading, and uh, here we are now. I mean, it's, yeah, it's amazing, yeah. man. The, your process, your journey, like uh, literally, you're now with over 120,000 subscribers in YouTube, and it's just keep growing and growing and growing. And the the job that you're doing is absolutely amazing because you really uh, took uh, a lot of subjects 
and you made it very simple to maybe a child that is five years old can understand so this is the beauty when you can do this kind of stuff you're a rock star like <laughs> literally it's it's great job man so uh, i wanted to ask you a question that most people uh, uh, don't uh, know how to do so how can you really reach influencer and connect with others in in the fitness industry for a uh, much more beginner uh, because there are so much uh, people out there especially from other countries who want to mark themselves and brand themselves more so how can they connect with people that have so much males and they can't really uh, connect with them um, I think that the first step is actually studying their work a lot, being very familiar with their work because that is how you prove to them that you actually care, that you actually that you actually were interested in learning the information before you contacted them, you, you, contacted, them, you contacted them personally. Mm -hmm. Because for example, uh, one of the things that I hate the most is when someone messages me directly and asks me a very, very basic question that shows me that they didn't even bother to look into one or two of, of the articles or the videos on, on the site. Mm -hmm. This automatically shows that, hey, this person um, feels like they are entitled to your yeah. help. I totally agree. There are so many people yeah. that send in me like, hi, hi, what's up? <laughs> what is I? <laughs> you know? <laughs> or oh, they send me, how do I lose fat? So I send them, how can I become a millionaire? So it's the same question, what the fuck? So, <laughs> so you yeah, gotta be specific, I'm not, right? Yeah, I'm not referring uh, uh, only to um, chats like this, hi, how, how's it going? Uh, I'm referring to really, uh, uh, basically, almost like a coaching email, where you they, they, they say their, their problems, goals, and say, okay, help me. And that's, I, I, I have three free ebooks on the site and videos that can help them with that specific problem, but that shows that they didn't uh, look at that information. So naturally, I am propelled by those people. So I think that is one thing that you should not do. You should be familiar with the work that of, of, of the people that you want to you, you want to get in contact with. So uh, uh, be familiar with their ideas. Be be up to date with their uh, social media account. Know what they're doing. Know what they're interested in. Know um, know what they do want basically. And what's interesting is when you actually spend the, the time to, to learn about that other person, then you get ideas about how you could how you could contribute to them, how you could make their life or their work better. Mm -hmm. And that is the way you approach them. I think you should always approach people with the mentality of giving something to them instead of asking yes. something of, of them. Yeah. And uh, that is the way I did it every time I wanted to, to contact some somebody, I said, hey, I really love your work, I read this, 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 I watched your videos, your ideas have influenced me a lot, and actually telling them what ideas influence me and how I use them in my work, because every is something gets very happy when they receive an email from someone who says, hey, I use your ideas, I listen to your advice, and this is how it served me in my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are always interested in hearing success stories. So if you can, if you can uh, let them know that your ideas help you, and actually sharing the results that you got from their ideas, they will be happy to, to read that email from you. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, when you want to connect with them, you offer to, to do something for them. For example, when I first reached out to, to Greg from, from Kinobody, I offered to um, to create a video of us together. Basically, we would jump on a call like we, we, we do right now, and I would edit that video, post it to my Romanian audience, so he would get um, more followers from our country, because obviously, uh, Kinobody was not very popular in Romania. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said, of course, because he w and that would just take maybe an hour of, uh, of, uh, of time, of, of, from his time, and she would get a video on it. That's, that's a good deal mm -hmm. for, for him. And uh, then I offered to, to sell his programs in Romania, in Romanian, and we would split the, the profits. So of course, he, he, agreed, he agreed to that as well. And uh, uh, my, my particular 
skill set was always making videos. So that is how I approach people in the in the industry. I said, hey, I like your information. I have a, a good system of uh, presenting it. Let's work together because we can create an awesome video together. I can send a lot of people uh, your way because I have an audience myself. Mm -hmm. Or you, 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 would, you would basically benefit from that video or content anyway. And uh, they always said, said yes because it's, it is not difficult. Yeah, I, I wanted and, to uh, take you a little bit about uh, the the art times because most people like when they see your YouTube channel or others and they seem like oh you just started and boom you have two thousand uh, subscribers, uh, two thousand two two hundred thousand subscribers and all of that. But uh, um, most people don't understand uh, how hard they work, how how it takes to them, the, the hard times, the moments that. They really wanted to maybe give up because they didn't see any traffic in their uh, channels and all of that. So, how did you handle in uh, hard times? Hmm. I don't really think about hard times because I I, I don't think hard times exist. Mm -hmm. I think oh, oh, actually they do when uh, things happen in your life that are outside of your control. For example, if you if a member of your family dies or you get sick or uh, something happens to you from the outside that makes you, um, uh, that that doesn't allow you to work, yes, then those are hard times. But when it's a fundamental lack of skill, I wouldn't call that hard times. For example, I, I was always very honest with myself about, I knew from the beginning when my content was good or it was bad. And in the beginning, for the first year or maybe two years, I knew that my videos and articles weren't that great. Because I just didn't have the skills or the equipment to make great videos. So naturally, I did not, I did not expect success at that point. Because I knew I was not, not deserving it uh, uh, yet. And I think many people feel entitled to an audience just because they create content. I think it's not the way uh, it works. I think an audience is earned through the quality of the content. If you're not getting the views, if you're not getting the attention, if you're not getting the track that you want, that means your content is not good enough yet. And I think this is something that it's very important to accept. Because then you know that the problem is in you. It's already in you. The problem is always in your skills. Mm -hmm. You just need to take the time to, for the first year and a half, I think, I knew that was strange for me. I knew that I was creating content, not, not necessarily to build an audience, but to get better. Hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create another video and I'm, make it, I'm going to make it better than last time. I know that I, I need to, to fix something um, in the way I speak, or the way I act in the videos, or the way I edit the music, the audio, whatever. I'm going to make my videos better than they were last time. Mm -hmm. And I knew that there will come a point, if I keep this up, where I will be deserving an audience. Mm -hmm. Where where the content will be will be good enough that people will actually appreciate it and then I will deserve to have an, an audience. I, and that is the way I I I approach it. I think that the problem uh, with most people that they're really in a rush because we live in a society that most people like, uh, okay, I need to do this, everybody is doing and posting in YouTube. So a lot of people are just posting a lot of stuff that they forget the quality. And I had an interview uh, not long ago with, if you know, uh, Patrick but David, who is also very successful in YouTube, is very uh, successful entrepreneur. So uh, he told me, you got to be aggressively patient. And if you are not, the more vision you have, the bigger the vision, the bigger uh, aggressively you need to be patient. Because most people are not patient. And I can say for myself that for a long time I was not patient. I always, ah, now, now, now. So uh, the minute you take the time and create a better quality uh, of content, then eventually you will start to bring what you want, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think. There's something else that's that's important to consider if we are ready for a big audience. Mm -hmm. Because yes, yes, I, I think a lot of people want more views, more content, more followers. But are you actually ready for that? 
Are you actually at the level where you can stand in front of an audience of 100,000, 200,000, 500,000, a million people and actually teach them something? Mm -hmm. Are you at the level where a million people look up to you, where you can actually teach them something? And are you ready for being considered a teacher, basically? Or if, if, if you create information content? Or are you, are, are you ready to, to be a public person, to be a YouTube celebrity, in a way? Because that's, that's also important, I think. When was your uh, moment when you decided with yourself, like, okay, I'm ready to go to the next level. I want to start posting more in English and uh, less in uh, Romanian. When I felt ready, when I felt I knew nutrition well, that, that was the point for me. I, when I felt I knew how to get how, how to get anyone lean and um, get them more muscular, I knew that I was ready basically to share those ideas. Because in the in the beginning, I, I focused more on fat loss because that was the thing I knew more about. In the beginning, I was not very well educated on training, on different training models and uh, uh, ideas and systems. And I, I did not talk about that uh, very, very often. I, 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 uh, I shared the information that I knew. Mm -hmm. And that was getting lean. N nutrition in general, like easier to, to understand than, than training in the beginning. So when I, when I felt confident on my skills on nutrition, I knew, hey, yeah, I'm ready that I for this video to get 100,000 views. Because if they bombard me with, question, with questions, I know, I, I know how to answer them. But if I posted a video about periodization two years ago, training periodization, and people came and uh, asked me in the comments a bunch of questions, I, I, I wouldn't have been able to, to answer because I, I, did not know the, I did not know the information myself. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, when I feel I'm ready for the next level is when I feel my skills match the level that I'm shooting for. Mm -hmm. Because I, I think, I think this, this works in business as well. For example, yeah, everybody wants to grow their business. Everybody wants more money, more customers, more sales, whatever. But are you actually ready for a business that makes a million dollars a year? Are you actually at the level where you can you can uh, you can keep a strict account of that money? Where you can uh, where you where you know how to invest, where to how to keep your expenses down, how to um, are you ready? To, do you have a customer support system that can account for so many customers that you have? Do you have basically is your is your business model ready to handle that amount of that, that amount of growth? And usually the answer is no. Mm -hmm. Usually the answer is no. And I think that we should always look at the level we are at uh, objectively and realize that. If we are not more successful, it's because mm, we are not ready for it. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. Uh, recently, you also the, released a new app, right? Uh, yeah. So, about the app. Yeah, well, the app, the app was, uh, was an interesting project. You asked me earlier about how to connect with influencers. Well, I, I posted a video on YouTube where I talked about these ideas. Uh, it's called how to find mentors and business partners. And I posted that on YouTube because I wanted to share this idea with my audience. And uh, then a month later, I get an email from, uh, from a guy named Billy. Uh, he's, from the, uh, he's from Dubai. And uh, he said, hey, Adu, um, I, I, I like your content. And uh, I, uh, I saw the, that, the video that, that you posted. And uh, I have an offer for you. I would like to create an app for Thinkative. We would, I would basically uh, create all the code, all the design, everything, and uh, um, we will we will promote it together to your audience. And basically, uh, I create the app, you have the audience, you, we put them together, we have a, mm -hmm. uh, uh, nice. a pro and, 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 and people to, to use it. And I said, sure, <laughs> what, what else can you say to, uh, to an offer like that? Okay. And uh, 
over 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 the next two months. That, that was that was in January uh, last year, uh, 2016. And uh, over the next two months, we uh, Shmi and I worked together, and uh, we uh, developed the the basic functions, uh, the, the basic ideas behind the app. And uh, he and his uh, uh, developer team uh, made did, did, did everything. They they wrote the code the, the code because I, I really have no idea how to do that and uh, we ended up creating a, a, a workout app that is I think easier to use than any other workout app uh, on, on, on in the app store right now because it is just very simple it's very 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 basic you just track a workout and that's it I think you don't need a, a whole bunch of stuff. In, in a single app, you just want to track your measurements and your strength progress, yes. and you do that simply. And that is uh, that is what we, what we did. And you can find the, the app at uh, in the app store. It's called Thinkative. It's our our brand. Yeah, yeah, it's totally amazing. I uh, started to use it, and it looks really great. Uh, the the simplicity of like uh, you have uh, a barbell and you just click on it uh, if you want to add weights and stuff. So that's really uh, easy to understand. So that's amazing. Yeah. So uh, the last question that I wanted to ask you, that I ask everybody, is uh, what legacy Radu want to live long after he will no longer be among us? Hmm. <laughs> that's a that's, <laughs> that's a very good question. I think what I would like to leave people with is that you should stretch as much as possible in your life. You should you should. In, you should develop yourself as much as possible. You should improve your skills as much as you can. You should see as much as you can. You should you should strive to reach your full potential in in, in this uh, in this lifetime with the condition that you um, serve others. So basically, develop yourself as much as you can in the service of humanity, making a, a contribution in the world. Because I think. Yes, in, in the beginning, we are, all, we are all selfish. We are drawn by what we can get. We want more money, we want a better physique, we want to be more famous, we want to have better things, uh, we want to live in luxury, all that stuff. But after a while, of course, yeah, you can you can chase those those goals. But after you you get them, or you get close to them, or you get a comfortable lifestyle, that is when you realize that if you keep developing yourself, then you almost have a responsibility to give back. Because you have reached a point of knowledge, of discipline, of wisdom, of skill, that you can build something that serves humanity. Mm -hmm. And I think, so what, what my legacy I would like to be is, um, I would like people to to pursue their goals, but doing it in terms of others, and in the end, getting get to a point where they look at the world and they uh, wonder, what can I do to improve it? What can I do mm -hmm. to solve some of the big problems that exist in the world? Yes. Um, so it's, it's personal development and giving back. Yes, uh, you consider yourself as a good leader for your country, for the world? Uh, a, a, a good leader for my country? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I don't think so, because, uh, well, I, at least, definitely not at the moment. Like, like we talked earlier about having the skills to, uh, having your skills match the point open the, the, the goal that you want. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to be the president of, of Romania, I, I have a lot of work to do. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of work to do. The, the country would not, be, would not be good in my hands <laughs> at the moment. No. Yeah. And I, I, I'm, I'm not really interested in, in, in politics. I think that... No, leader uh, doesn't have to be just in politics. Leader is somebody that people are uh, really inspired by uh, and uh, you, you influence others. So it's not just in politics. I think I, I can be, at the moment, I can be a low-level leader in a way. So basically, I, I, I think that you can, and that's, that's another insight I think. I, think. I think that you will always attract, uh, most of your audience 
will be people that are at a lower level than you in what you teach. Mm -hmm. So basically, the, the, the more you develop yourself, the more you know, the larger your audience can be because more people can, uh, uh, can, can learn from it. Mm -hmm. And at the point where I'm, where I'm right now, I think I can, I can teach uh, young about fitness and about personal development and uh, starting a small business, but that's, that's about it. I, I, I couldn't coach the CEO of a big company, uh, a bodybuilder, or uh, someone that is at a more advanced level than, than, than I am. This is what I think. What is the, the next thing for you? Like, uh, okay, now I'm very good in YouTube, but is it now that, uh, okay, I want to start to uh, public speaking and doing seminars? Is this something that you consider to do? Um, Really, actually, that's that's my my my, my brother told. Uh -huh. I don't know if you're familiar with, with my brother, but public speaking is uh, is uh, his goal. No, I think that the next thing for me right now is actually learning to manage a business better. Mm -hmm. I think that I'm I'm currently at the point where if I just focus on creating content, the business is because I have to to do many different jobs at, at, at the same time. I have to be the content creator, I have to be the one that does customer service, I have to be the one that builds the website, that posts on social media, that uh, takes care of it. It's basically, I, I, I do a lot of things myself, and uh, that's not good. And I, the, the next thing for me is uh, learning about how to, how to build a business, how to create systems mm -hmm. in it that help it uh, produce the, the, a predictable result every time. So customer service is the same every time. The products are the same every time. The videos are, are the same every time. That, that, that's all the result stuff. And uh, I want to slowly, to slowly automate the parts of the business that I do not enjoy doing. And so I, I can focus on content and on learning and on sharing ideas and um, uh, if I wanted to, to be able to not do anything for two months, three months, or whatever, and the business to be to be still yeah. running smoothly. I totally agree with you, man. I'm I'm right now in the same position. I'm trying to do everything: podcasting, writing, editing videos, everything, everything. So you say, what the fuck? I have only 24 hours, and I can't do it. And uh, there are some stuff that you just can't do it. Like for me, writing the podcast is something I. Fuck, I can't sit down and do it like it takes me two hours to write down and then uh, edit everything so yeah you you gotta uh, know how to manage people better so they can help you build your business and you can um, duplicate yourself right yeah I, I, I started um, listening to, to an audiobook it's called uh, the image e the entrepreneur me by Michael Gerber and uh, that idea gave me some insight that I, I have not heard anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Talked about, uh, in, in the beginning, you, you basically, the, the way that you should structure a small business, uh, um, according to that author, is that you should have in mind the organizational structure from the beginning. Basically, the, the pyramid of a company where you have the CEO at the top and the COO and uh, then you move lower with each manager and then the salespeople and whatever. It depends on, on the business. But you should have in mind all the roles from the beginning because you know what level you want to be at. Mm -hmm. For example, if you want to build a million dollar business, then you know that the company needs to have a certain number of sales, a certain numbers, and to, 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 give, to have that certain number of sales, you need a certain number of products that you can sell. And mm -hmm. that means you need to have a certain number of employees and uh, you can you can anticipate what the organizational structure has to be mm -hmm. for for that for that point. Yes. And what you do is in the beginning because you're alone, you fill each of the positions yourself. You are you are the whole organizational structure, mm -hmm. and that's that's where we are at the moment. Yes, yes. And uh, <laughs> you said that hey, the, the next uh, the next step is to slowly start to fill in some of the other roles. So mm -hmm. basically, once you, for example, if you uh, did customer service for three months, you probably did, you probably developed a system by which you do it. And once you have that system in place, then you can bring someone else in the company and say, hey, look, 
This is the system that you need to use. All you have to do is follow the instructions, and we will produce the same result every time. Basically, if the person follows your instructions, they will they will uh, create the same customer service as you. Do. And once you manage to create one of those systems for each person in the organizational structure, mm -hmm. then you can you could theoretically um, build yourself out of the business. You you, you could. You could exit the organizational structure and let it run by itself because now we have built we have built yeah. each role, each system in the company, and it mm -hmm. runs smoothly. Yes. So uh, this is my my next big project. I I think. Yeah, I really wish you all the best, man. Thank you very much for the time, and uh, I really believe uh, you gave a lot of value for other people in this interview. So thanks again, man. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Thank you, Lidor.